All right, so now we're going to move on to our layers section. When I can touch the back of it with my hand and it doesn't feel cooler than the rest of the paper, I know it's dry, so that's a little trick. So now that this is totally dry, I can come back with different colors. <clears throat> so maybe I have a little bit of green, and I can come back and put details on top of that yellow. Maybe I want like a vine or something. So because this is totally dry, I can do that as long as I don't have a lot of water in it. I could also come back and create maybe a gradation like I did here with the fade. I can do that here, but with a different color. And now instead of fading all the way to white, it will fade to yellow or yellow green if they kind of mingle together. So it's best to do this kind of with analogous colors. So there is that option. Next I will go to the resist method. So here I have a white oil pastel. I can also do this with um, white crayon or there are some things made for doing this. I'm going to do this with white oil pastel. So I can draw anything I want with that white oil pastel and now when I go over it with a color, I'm going to choose some green, I can go back over it and you'll be able to see what I drew. So you can kind of see that I drew a heart there with some arrows. It's best to press really hard with the white oil pastel and to not go over it too much or it will kind of start to break it down a little bit. It also works best with darker colors. Maybe I'll go in with some blue so you can see it better. Because of the waxiness of the oil pastel, it resists the water and then you can see your design through it. So now I have my last two techniques. I have my salt technique and my straw. For the salt, I'm going to put down a layer of color. I don't want too much water here. Put down some color. I'm going to wait for that to dry just a little bit. You have to wait for it to dry to just the right point. The trick is when it doesn't look shiny or wet anymore, but not when it's totally dry. So I'm going to wait for that to dry a little bit. I'm going to move over to my straw technique. So for this, I need quite a bit of water, and I want like a bead of paint. And I'm going to come over with my straw and create that straw technique. Now I can go back maybe with a different color. I have some red now. I can blend in. Or I can kind of sometimes you gotta break break it a little bit. This is for areas that you obviously don't need a lot of control. I went into my other area a little bit, that's okay. So now, that's the straw method. You can use that for maybe some veining in your bell pepper, etc. Alright, so this salt area is just about dry enough. And I'm going to go in with some salt. This is table salt. And I'm going to sprinkle 
some of that salt onto my painted area and it will actually take the water in so the salt will absorb all the moisture <coughs> and what you're left with are these little spots so when you knock the salt off when it's totally dry you'll knock that soft salt off and you'll have these little dots which kind of gives a cool different kind of texture which is kind of neat so here's the end result from someone, something that's dry you can kind of see that it has that spotted technique which might be cool for that pulpy bell pepper look so those are the eight different watercolor techniques that you're going to be working with. For the bell pepper you will uh, choose four, four of these and you'll use any of those four for your bell pepper piece.